to how to repair. In this video series I'm going to be going through the top 10 faults on single ovens and cookers. We're going to go through how to diagnose the problem on your cooker, how to rectify the problem and also to get you to the relevant parts that you need for your cooker and associated videos to help you fit the components to your cooker correctly. You will be able to identify the part for your cooker. You will need the full model number. This can normally be found around the cooker door frame. Sometimes they wear off. Sometimes you may need to take the cooker out of its housing in the kitchen and the number will either be on the side of the cooker or on the rear of the cooker. Make sure you get the correct model number to be able to identify the part correctly. I will be uploading these over the course of the next few weeks. They will also have links in the description below and also on the cards above to all the relevant videos and components. Do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also click the bell icon. This will give you notification to when a new video is being uploaded and also other programs that are coming during the course of this winter with regards live streaming questions and answers to help you rectify the problems on your appliances. Hi, welcome back to part 6 out of the top 10 most common faults on cookers and ovens. Today we're looking at fan oven motors and the significance they play towards distributing the heat inside the oven and the faults that can occur from this. One of the most common faults that people do not understand is they can actually turn their fan oven on and they can see the blade turning in the back of the cooker but it's not turning at the correct RPM. This may be due to the windings getting weak on the motor or the most common is the bearings are clogging up. They're not conventional bearings on fan oven motors. They usually use a brass uh, bearing on either end. Um, this is normally called phosphorus bronze type bearing and these can basically wear over a period of time and start to cause the blade not to be able to turn freely and therefore the windings on the motor aren't strong enough to rotate the blade at the correct RPM. So what we'll be doing today is we'll be using an RPM uh, counter and we'll be putting a little mark on the blade and we'll measure the RPM of a fan motor and I will simulate for you the two different faults that can occur. One is the blade is not starting, in other words, it's only moving at a very slow speed. Another is the blade is rotating, but not rotating at the correct RPM. On most cookers, the RPM should be somewhere in the region of about 1100 to about 1300, depending on the type of motor fitted to the cooker. We'll also use my thermal imaging camera. Uh, which is built into my phone to try and explain how the air rises within the cooker and is distributed around the cooker in a convection format. This will actually distribute the air evenly within the oven if it's working correctly. If it is not working correctly then all the heat at the back of the oven coming off the fan oven element will be rising directly to the probe or NTC sensor in the top right hand side therefore giving the thermostat a false reading of what the temperature is say at the front of the oven but we'll go through all this and I'll explain it properly as we go along we'll also be having a look at our dissective oven and I'll be able to explain to you how the fan blade is fitted correctly because sometimes when people fit fan oven motors to cookers they don't fit them correctly and therefore the fan blade can either catch on the fan guard or sometimes catch on the element. This can also happen when people replace elements. Okay, we're going to simulate the type of faults that you may be occurring. First thing is you turn your oven on to the fan setting and in here you've got the fan blade. Now if I just give it a helping hand you can see it starts to turn. Now this would be a very very bad motor. The windings will be very weak or the bearings can be full of grease and not turning. 
Sometimes you can clean them, but I don't recommend it because they last five minutes with the extreme temperatures. And as you can see, the fan blade is turning, but it's not actually doing any good whatsoever. If the thermostat was on and the element was heating up, the air would not be coming out of the cavity at force and therefore not circulating around the cooker. As you can see, the fan blade is not turning very fast. Now I've got this connected up to a voltage regulator to simulate these faults for you. And I've cut a normal kitchen towel into a few telltales similar to what you would have on a sail on the boat. And the air here should be flowing and making these actually move in the air. Uh, so I'm going to turn the motor up to its normal RPM and you can see that they've got movement. Now what we'll do in a second is take the fan guard off and I will show you the difference on the RPM. That fan blade at the moment is I doubt running at two three hundred RPM even when I put it at fifty percent it still has no significant airflow. You may think it's running but it's not creating the airflow that's necessary to go across the element and blow the heat around the oven. If the element was on at the moment, all that would be happening is the heat would be going up to the probe or NTC sensor, whichever is fitted on your cooker. It can be in the right, left-hand side, or maybe at the top here. All that heat would be rising and actually going to the thermostat and giving it a false indication of what the temperature is here at the front of the oven. Right, the fan's off, the cooker's off, so I'm going to take the fan guard off. These RPM checkers are not that expensive. It's a digital tachometer, uh, tachometer, and I'm just going to put a mark on the blade because this one is quite shiny and it might get a false reading. Matter of fact, I'll put it more in the center there. And we'll turn the oven on. On a lot of the Bosch's and some of the higher end uh, makes, sometimes the blades will get sticky and if you're just pushing them by hand, they will start to turn. This is a very common type of scenario where the blade actually starts turning. People think it's doing good, but as you can see, the airflow is not enough to go through the element. And at that RPM, which is only 300 RPM, there is no significant airflow running around this element. Now, the airflow that you're looking for We've got a bit of airflow now, I've turned it up and it looks like the fan blade and you can actually feel a little bit of the air hitting you on the face. Uh, but we're still only at 60% of or 50% of the capacity of the actual fan motor. This fan motor is designed to turn at 1200 RPM. Now if I increase my voltage now to the maximum, you can significantly hear the sound of the blade doing its work. At the moment it's pushing the air outwards because the fan guard is not there and it would normally be pushing the air outwards through the holes on the fan guard. As you can see there are clear ventilation holes. The air is drawn in and pushed out on the sides. Now if we look at the RPM on this now 1239 RPM. That is what the RPM of this motor is designed at. This will cause the airflow to circulate within the oven and allow the food to cook correctly. If the RPM is not high enough, therefore this thermostat at the top here would be getting awfully hot because heat rises, but the air at the front of the oven would not be as hot as it would be here, therefore giving a false indication to the NTC probe or the thermostat. Now, I've set up my thermal camera, which is a, it's a cat phone, by the way, if any of you are asking. 
Um, they're very good. I'll put a link in below for you. Uh, they have thermal imaging and measuring of distances for tiling areas and so on. Very good, robust phone. Uh, not the cheapest in the world though. So we're going to turn the fan blade on to normal and I'm going to turn the thermostat on and we will watch what happens. You can see the element starting to heat. I'll just move the camera for you slightly. You can see the air out of the bottom duct now as well coming out down here and you can see the corner cavities where the airflow are in the corners heating up as well. Now I've just done this again for you and now the fan is not turning. You can see the plate at the top all the way around the top now that element is heating up but the heat is rising and not flowing through the side ducts. So the actual thermostat probe area, which is just above in the corner there that you can see, is starting to get hot. But at the front of the oven here, the heat hasn't even reached the front of the oven. And this would cause your food to cook incorrectly. Now, as you can see here, the fan blade turns inside the fan oven element. And the distance between the back plate of the oven and the fan guard is quite important for it to be in the center because as things get hot they expand and as the fan blade turns round it will slightly distort in shape and if I can quietly move this into a better position you can actually see how close this is to the front guard. There is only about three or four millimeter of distance between the guard and the front plate. At the back, there is most probably about a centimeter. That's perfectly good. That's the genuine fan motor. So that's the requirements that the manufacturer had. But don't be worried if you are stuck in obtaining the correct fan motor for your cooker in other words the part may have become obsolete there are some universal fan motors which you can use the genuine fan motor that came off this cooker has slight recesses in on the mounting arms which locate in the lugs at the back this allows the motor to sit square on on the back plate because it's held with a secondary plate here. If the motor has become obsolete on your cooker, there are universal motors which you can use. This comes with the motor, and the motor is 23 watt, which is perfectly adequate. It spins at about 1200 RPM, exactly the same as the original. You will first have to consider the mounting of the plate. Now, on flat plated cookers, they go straight on, no problems whatsoever. You would then put the plate on. Then you would be able to put the gasket. Then the fan blade can be fitted in three different positions, creating you six, 14 and 22 mil distances. When the fan blade is fixed to the housing without any spaces, you're going to be at a six mil distance. But by putting a shim on, then the blade, then another shim, you have now got a distance of approximately 14 millimeter. Taking the shim off, putting two shims on, and then fitting the blade on, you have now got a distance of 19 millimeter. This will allow you to actually fix the blade so you get it perfectly in line with the fan guard and the fan back plate. The size of the blade is built in a way that it will fit 99% of most cookers, but sometimes you may need to replace the blade with your existing blade because some fan elements are very, very small and that blade might be too big to sit inside the element. But 
it fits 99%, I can assure you of that. All the dimensions for this product, by the way, are at the website. So the blade diameter, the, all the instructions and everything else are at the website. The last thing to remember is on all cookers, the nut for doing up the fan blade is opposite rotation to normal. In other words, you will not be doing it up uh, clockwise, you will be doing it up anti-clockwise and to undo it, you will do undo it clockwise. This is to keep the fan blade on. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember there are many links in the description below and on the cards above to assist you in finding the correct video to fit the right component for your cooker. Remember you will always need the full model number although they can be hard to find on your appliance on occasion because they've worn off but without the correct model number it is very hard for us to be able to identify the correct part for your appliance. There are many videos within this series to assist you finding the correct fault of your appliance and if you do need any further assistance feel free to use the contact us page at the website. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to support the website either by buying the parts off us or clicking on the Buy Paula Beer page. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Music